Hey guys. All right, <clears throat> now that I've got the material out of the way, I mean, I got it sawed up. I got that part out of the way. Uh, let's talk for a minute. Um, if you saw the video, Making a Prototype Machete, there's a lot of things that I did in that video and I'm not gonna go over again. I'm not gonna talk about them, waste a bunch of time. But the one thing I'm gonna go over is some of the things that I haven't shown you that are pretty neat, okay? Now, as you've, as you, as you've noticed, I'm starting on a new uh, bush tool. And what it is, it's half axe and half shovel. Something that I've been thinking about for a long time that I've wanted to do. And uh, so, anyway, I'm not gonna show you what it's actually gonna look like. I'm not gonna explain it. I'm just gonna wait because it's gonna be finished at the end of the video. <laughs> but anyway, I got the stuff sawed out. And for now, I'm gonna set the handle to the side. I don't need that, okay? Now these things right here, this is gonna be the actual blade and shovel part of it, okay? Now one of the things that I'm gonna be doing that's pretty neat that I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna be using angle blocks, okay? Kinda neat, I'm gonna show you how they work. I've used them for years. But what they are is they're basically blocks that hold things on the milling machine at an angle. That way you don't have to tilt them in the vise. So let's go on over to the milling machine and I'll set these things up and we'll get to cutting our angles on our uh, shove axe. <laughs> half shovel, half axe. All right, the way these things work right here now is you just slide them over, okay? That's all it is. And then you set this piece on top, okay? Set that piece on top, okay? And that holds it, you see, just like that, okay? Now, the piece that clamps on slides on here, slides on here. Then, let's see right here. You can put this here. You see? That's how you clamp it down. Okay? Put your nut right here on top. You're ready to go. See, he's on around here for a minute. Check this out. Slide this up. Put your clamp on there. Alright. Tighten it down. And then you're going to be ready to cut. Right across the top. Cut that angle. Alright guys, I got the uh, digging angle done. Ain't that neat? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, that is a 14 degree angle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here on this side and I'm going to put a 10 degree chopping angle for the axe. So, I am done with my 14 degree jig. Okay. Put that in. All done with that. And I'm going to pull out my 10 degree jigs. And I'm going to use them to set up for that other cutting angle.
right. I got the other piece done. I got the two cutting angles now. Isn't it neat? All right. There you go. That's what it's going to look like. Now, <clears throat> it's starting to look a little bit weird, but believe me, it's going to turn out cool. <laughs> Hang in there, guys. All right, today's a big day. I'm going to get to find out how the welding's going to turn out on this thing. I just got to... I got to warm up my uh, jig here. I got the parts in the oven preheating. You got to preheat this stuff before you weld it, keep it from cracking. So, let's see what I can do now.
Yeah. Nick, come over here and say hey into the camera. Hey, there's my <laughs> Nick came out here to visit me. Alright. Got that done. Well, I got that done. Now, what I'm going to do is I welded it one side and I flipped it over and I've welded the back side and I'm not going to unclamp it because if I unclamp it, it's liable to spring on me. So, I'm going to let it cool just like this. Let's take a quick look at it. right there all in clamps I got that's the back side of it now I'd really like to unclamp it and show it to you but I don't think I can so what we're going to do I got to leave it up there I got to leave it on there for it to cool scoot you on back a little bit stupid tripod all right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it up with a ceramic blanket now what that should do is it should keep the heat in and uh, I'll unclamp it tomorrow and then uh, we can get started on the handle <laughs> alright see you guys tomorrow guys I'm back out here and I think it's cooled off so well it should be it's it's been a while <laughs> all right let's remove some of these clamps here what I had to do is I kept it clamped down while it was cooling off <clears throat> to keep it from warping so what I'm gonna do now is as, as I unclamp this thing it looks like it hasn't I'm gonna unclamp it and kind of show you what the idea what the concept of it is because I know you're kind of wondering all right let's see there we go all right I got it unclamped as you can see I got it welded all the way down the middle okay now the basic idea behind this thing is I got it shaped like this because it's going to be like a shovel, okay? But it's going to have a sharp side on it like an axe. Now the reason for the unusual twist, let's see if you can see it. Okay, is where the axe is, when you're swinging with an axe like this, let's see if you can see it better like this, when you're swinging with an axe like this, the axe is in line with the handle right here okay see how every bit of that is in line okay you can ignore the back side okay it's kind of hard to show it on camera <laughs> and then on this other side it starts out flat and then this side slowly twist up into this okay kind of weird looking at everything backwards in the camera <laughs> but anyway basically this is how it's starting to look right here see the axe part here is all in line I think you can see a little bit better that way so that when you're actually swinging it like an axe half of it is in line okay that's enough looking at it now what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna sand real good on this handle I'm gonna smooth it out real good and then I'm gonna lay out for the plastic for so I can cut out for the handle that'll be next all right here's another day shot <laughs> I have spent hours and hours and hours polishing on this thing and as you can see 
Let's see. Let me cut this thing on there real quick. You can see I got a nice polish on the handle because I wanted to have a decent polish out on the end right there. And you can see kind of the twist in it now. I'm going to run that straight. See, this is perfectly flat. And then you got half of it twisting up into this shape. I'm going to show you the other half. See how the blade is perfectly flat? Okay, you got the blade, and then this half right here is in line. See, kind of hard to tell, ain't it? One half's in line, and the other half is twisted. Maybe I should have called it an axe with a twist. <laughs> All right, I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to waste a little bit of time showing you how I polished that, because now what I'm going to do is from here out, I'm going to make a plastic handle for both sides. I'm going to use a gray PVC plastic, unbreakable. Run over it with a truck. So, all right, I killed the whole day polishing this. And I'm not going to polish none of the rest of this stuff because this thing's going to have to go through an extensive annealing, drawing, tempering, and heat treating process. And so I'm just going to grind on the welds a little bit, but I'm going to do all the polishing after I get it back from where it's coming from. So, anyway... <laughs> When I'm back out here tomorrow, we'll start on the handle. See you then. What you can see now is I got the two halves done. I got them things machined out nice right there. So, you can see now that I've got the nice shape cut out around it. You get an idea of what I've been kind of tossing around here. Okay, so got the outside done. <clears throat> now, let's see what we're going to do next right here. I'm going to kind of show you on paper right here. Let's just imagine that this drawing is the top view of this block, okay? So I'm going to do some shaping into the sides of these. I got the backs marked because they'll go on either side. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to cut this section. I'm going to leave a half inch fl flat here, a half inch here, and a half inch here. And I'm going to cut this down to where it's only a half inch thick. And then I'm going to come up here, and then I'm going to cut this down to where this is. 
three quarter thick, okay? And I've chosen me a couple of offsets right here that I'm gonna use. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to those offsets and then I'm gonna cut a radius into the handle right there, okay? And then I'm gonna to go to that offset and then I'm gonna cut that radius into the handle. I see that seems like an awful lot to cut out of that. What I'm gonna do is once I've got that cut out, these corners right up in here and in here, I'm gonna blend them in. But I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna I'm gonna do that next with a device called a rotary table. Guess what? <laughs> Alright, before I go to the rotary table, I gotta cut down that, that thickness right there what I was talking about. So we're gonna cut that down and then go to the rotary table. guys now normally on a milling machine you're going to be cranking you, you you're going to be cutting things that are square and you're going to be either going in an x or a y direction you'll be you know cranking these handles you can't really do anything round on a milling machine unless you've got a device called a rotary table okay and what this thing does is as you can see you crank it here and you have your part here and you can crank and crank and cut things that are round. <laughs> it's really a neat device. It looks complicated at first, but once you understand it, it's no big deal. So, and of course, the further out you clamp on it, the bigger the radius you're going to cut. Okay. So, the first step that we're going to do is you got to center the spindle to the center of the rotary table, and you're going to do that with a dial indicator. So. We're going to center that up real quick and then we'll be ready to go. Alright, I got my rotary table dialed in now. So now I'm going to set my fixture up. What I do is I'll put that up there. Get me a couple of studs started. That I can screw it in with these studs and some nuts. Okay. All right. Now the next step is what I'm going to do as I'm tightening this down is I'm going to offset this thing by three and a quarter inch. Okay. And then I'm going to tighten it down. Okay. And then I'll move on to the next step. That way I'll have my offset this way. <clears throat> All right. I've got my chosen offset right here. Okay. This way. Now what I got to do is I got to choose my offset this way. So the way I'm going to do that is shove this up against here and then lay this right here okay then I'm gonna make a mark right here and that's where the part will bolt up right up against that edge right there all right now we're getting right. somewhere <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is I'm ready to actually put the part in so line that up okay we'll take this and put this up here all right 
Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use some things called parallels. What they are is they're precision ground bars, okay? And there's not much precise about me. <laughs> but anyway, this is to get the top of it parallel. So you lay one on here, you lay the other one on top, and then you push it down, okay? That way you got it perfectly parallel, okay? Now I'm gonna put a temporary clamp on here I love these clamps right here because you can use them one-handed. All right, I got a temporary clamp on there. Now the clamp I'm gonna use when I do the actual machining is gonna be heavy-duty C-clamp like this, okay? Give it a good tighten down. Come over here, give this a good tighten. All right, that should hold the part. Now I'm gonna be able to cut from here to here this 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 first radius. Okay, all I got to do now is I got to put the cutter in, and I'll be ready to cut. As you can see now, I got this radius right here roughed in, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, um, I wanna make every one of them the same, so I'm gonna measure so that I've got my quarter inch, okay? Looks like I'm gonna need about, about 20 more thousandths, 20 to 25. So what I'll do then is I take and put me an indicator up here, all right? And I lock it down. I'll zero it, and then all I do is unclamp the table, and move it in about 25 thousandths, and then I'll be ready. I got my first radius done okay that's going to be <clears throat> that's going to be the side of the handle so pretty cool and then what i'll do is i'll take the other one and i'll cut it the same so you get the basic idea that's going to be my side grip and i'm leaving plenty up here to keep my hand from slipping off of it and there's going to be plenty in the back back here keep it from flying through my hand and I can use it for hitting okay so I got this other radius here I got to cut and then I'll cut the two on here and I'll be ready to start trimming some of this stuff off cool ain't it Time to get on with the second half and I'll be able to start blending it in. All right, I got the machine work done on the two of them, okay? And the way they're gonna go, they're gonna fit on either side of the handle, just like that, 
okay but there's gonna be a lot more grinding to do to them okay now <clears throat> this one I've already done a little bit of the radius work to it see right here compared to this one okay now the way you can do that is take what they call a deburring tool take a deburring tool and you just slowly scrape a little bit okay you can keep doing that and then you're going to wind up putting a little bit of a radius on it see right there So you neat, neat compared to a sharp edge like that. Alright. Now, I'm going to deburr these up and then we're going to drill some holes in them. Alright. What I'm doing is I'm getting it all roughed in. And uh, I'll show you the progress of how I'm radiusing it. It takes a lot of hand work. So you can compare this one. To this one you can see how much hand work is involved I'm roughing it out with the sandpaper to get the shape that I want you got to machine it to get the general shape that you want to start out with okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet sand it I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna finish sanding this other one right here and uh, then tomorrow when I come back out here what I'll do is I'll drill the holes okay and then Whenever I send it off for um, heat treat, that's when I'll do the final polishing. And what I'll do the final polishing with is a, a die grinder with a 3M pad on the end of it. So I'll polish it up real smooth. And that'll smooth everything out real good. You can already see it's getting a lot shinier. But you got to get the, the shape in there to begin with. So, all right, tomorrow we'll be doing some hole drilling as soon as I get that and done. <laughs> so all right, you. guys. Now, I've got just about all the polishing that I want to do on the two handle sections. And now I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach them. And uh, what I do, naturally, they're going to go on either side right here, just like that. And then I'm going to... I'm going to run a pin through them, but basically the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to I'm going to clamp it down, okay? I'm going to clamp it down with one half on a piece of wood over on the milling machine, and then I'm going to drill the holes, drill and ream holes two here, two here, and two here. And then once I've got the holes through this and the handle, then what I'm going to do is I'll stack these two up and I'll line them up. And then I'll use this as a guide to drill through to the other side. So, all right. And I'm going to attach them with some uh, pins. And what I did, <clears throat> I took stainless steel tubing and uh, I cut them off to different lengths. And if they're not the right length, I'll sand them smooth. But what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to drill the holes and then I'm going to ream them. A reamer is a precision tool. A drill bit just puts a, just a sloppy round hole that could be any size through something. But a reamer will put, I don't know if all of you know what a reamer is, but a reamer will put a precision hole in so that this will be a press fit. So, okay. I'm going to clamp it down. We'll center drill, drill, and ream. Okay. All right, let's get going. All right, as you can see, I got the Shavax sitting here on the milling machine and what I've done I got it clamped I got some little pieces of plastic under here to protect it and then I got the clamps I got one one half of it clamped down sitting on top of wood okay all right now next step what you do then is you start the hole with what is called a center drill okay what that does is that keeps the drill bit from wandering around all over the place okay then you take a drill bit Okay, the drill bit just puts a rough hole in it. Okay, then you finish the hole by putting a very precise hole in with what is called a reamer. Okay, now what I did with a reamer is I chose a reamer that's exactly quarter inch. Okay, 250 thousandths. Right there, okay, 250 thousandths. Okay, ream the hole that. 
because the tubing that I am using, it's just stainless steel tubing, measures 251 thousandths. Okay? That way I'll have one thousandths press fit. Alright, so let's get to drilling and center drilling, drilling, and reaming. Now, I'm back in the uh, dirty part of my shop <laughs> where I do all the grinding and stuff. Now, I've got I've got the holes drilled in it, okay? So now what I got to do, the next thing I got to do, I started polishing on the back of it just a little bit just to see how it was going to blend in and I started, I did some grinding and some polishing. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish up all of the grinding on these welds and stuff and um, I just I grind them all I grind them all with just a regular old air grinder and uh, so what I'm gonna do is I grind them and then uh, when I get done with that I'm gonna send it out I'm not going to videotape all of that part but I'm gonna send when I'm gonna send it out and it's gonna be annealed and then it's gonna be heat treated and then it's gonna be what's called normalized and uh, it's all processes that I can't do and I'm not going to try to do. And, uh, and then when I get it back, then I'm going to polish it with uh, one of these flapper wheel pads on a grinder. But anyway, I'm not going to subject you guys to all of the grinding. But basically, you know, I'm going to be grinding all this down right here so that I won't have so much to polish when it comes back. And uh, he's gonna grind an edge on it for me. Right now, I've just I've just got a big bevel on it, but not an edge. And uh, got the holes in it. And uh, so next time you see it, it's I'll be putting the handles on. All right, <laughs> we'll get to grinding. All right, finally got it back. All right, there's been a lull in filming for about a week while I've been waiting on my friend to do his magic. So let's see what he's got right here. He's got a nice protective little case right here. He said that all I was going to have to do is put the handle in it when I got done with it. And, oh man, that thing looks great. He did a really, really good job on it. All I gotta do is put the handle in it and I can't wait to take this thing and try it out. <laughs> It's gonna be great. All right, let's put the handle in it. I can't wait to use this bad boy. <laughs> Check it out, guys. My dream tool. <laughs> All right, now, as you can see, it's finally done. Okay? I got the handle on it. 
all the polishing's done, heat treating's done. It's been ground, beat on, polished. All right. Now, now I've only got I got the end of it sharpened at a 45 degree angle for digging holes. Okay, the primary angle on this cutting side, the secondary angle is 20 degrees. Okay. Now I didn't cut. I didn't do this other side simply because if you look at this, the handle is flat. This part is flat and in line with this, okay? So when I'm swinging, okay, when I'm swinging it, all this is going to be in line like an axe. Now I didn't sharpen this side because it would be at a twist. See, it would be, it would be at a twist to the handle, okay? But now when I'm cutting with this, everything is going to be in line, okay? Now the reason for this handle it ain't the most beautiful thing in the world. It's actually kind of bizarre looking, but it's what I came up with that when it's wet, I can either grip it with one hand or I can grip it with two hands, okay? And the other thing is when I'm actually using it as a shovel, I'm going to have a place to put my hand on it, you see? And see, this will slide up against it here, and this will slide right here, all right? Sound good? All right. Here, move that leg out right there just a little bit. Let's get over here. I'm going to try to... Let's do a little bit of cutting right here. Now, I've never... I've never made anything like this before, so I'm going to use safety glasses. This is supposed to be guaranteed not to break, but I'm going to try it anyway. So... Done pretty good so far. Whoop. Missed. <laughs> Dang, that thing's dig digging in. How's it look, Nick? Perfect. Let's try some of this thicker stuff right here. I'm going to rear back with it a little bit. Oh, man, that thing did good. Let's go on up a little bit thicker. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. It say it ground on it. Dried oak. Dad gum. Well, he said he sharpened it. And he, on the front, he put 45 degree, and he put 20 degree here. Oh man, this thing cuts good. It's even going through that and burying itself in. All right, now I know it's going to dig a hole. Let's get some of this old stuff right here. So you got another cutting edge. I don't know. So you can also hold it like this. Let's see right here. Dang, that's digging in. Woo! Digging hey, after a long days of chopping, you come home, well, come back to your campsite, and after catching a few fish, you can chop it up with that. Probably could. After you cleaned it. Well, that thing turned out great right there, Nick. I'm really happy with that. Now, I'm not going to dig a hole, because I know it's going to dig a hole. <laughs> I just got to make sure, and it's going to be good when I'm digging holes, too, when I get down to roots. Just give it a big old chop. <laughs> Man, this is going. This is my dream tool. I love this thing, man. It takes the place of a, a axe and a shovel, and I guess a machete, really. But all right. So next video, me and Nick, we're gonna be building a shelter and we're gonna be using this tool. So, all right. Till next time, guys. We will see you in the next one.